Olu Olawatimi got a little bit of his first real significant action here against the Packers in the final preseason game for our Seahawks before we're going to start this upcoming season. And he's going to find himself now as the backup here as we begin things to Evan Brown. But I really do believe it's going to be sooner than later still that Olo Atimi is going to be able to slide into that starting center role. And I believe that a lot of the tape that he showed you with the Packers game is a lot of what you can hope to see him bring on into the future. It's the stuff that did carry over from his time there in college where at the University of Michigan, he both won the Remington Award, which is given out to the best center in college football, but he also won the Outland Trophy Award, which is given out to the best lineman in all of college football. He won both of those two awards, which I think is significant. And this is a very smart center, a guy who has a very good understanding of how to play the position. He's had a lot of time in college football, a lot of starts in college football to prepare himself for here this NFL level. And he's a guy that is going to be missing, I guess, a little bit of your you know, dynamic athleticism you might seek out there for the position or some otherworldly strength but he just gets the job done. And is that not really what we sometimes look at centers and how they do what they do? They don't tend to be the most physical dominant guys out there, but they just find a way, the good ones, to get the job done. So let me show you a little bit of the tape here from this past game against the Packers and why the future is looking very bright at the center position for our Seattle Seahawks. I'm not thinking that this guy's gonna eventually become a star at the position, but a stalwart at the position. Let me show you how he can pull it off. On this first rep, we're going to get to see Oluwatimi in pass protection. And this is really where he is at his best as it currently stands as a player. He's not bad as a run blocker, but he's just at his best in pass protection. And specifically, you can trust him as a center one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot of centers out there that you just want them double teaming all the time, almost 24-7 if you can get away with it. You just don't trust them one-on-one because -on -one you feel like they're going to get beat and beat fast. Well, here you're going to get to see him one-on-one -on -one against one of these defensive linemen for the Packers, and not just a, any old defensive lineman, but Devontae Wyatt. This is maybe the best three-tech that came out of the draft last year out of Georgia. He's a twitchy kind of cat out there. This is the kind of guy you'd think would give problems to a center if he did try to block him one-on-one. -on -one. But indeed, Oluwatimi holds up really well here. He controls Wyatt right after the snap, gets his hands inside right on the chest plate so there's no real chance of holding, and then controls him throughout the course of the play. Anthony Bradford, his right guard, comes over and eventually provides a little bit of help eventually, but he's handling the job here. He's shutting down any kind of early pressure, and this is his bread and butter. This is what Oluwatimi does really well. So we got to see Oluwatimi go up against Devontae Wyatt, former first-round pick. How does he do against another first-round pick and maybe perhaps the best defensive lineman here on this Packers line in Kenny Clark? Again, he holds up pretty doggone good here. On this play, you're going to have Kenny Clark lined up as the left defensive end for the Green Bay Packers right across from Jake Curhan. And then he's going to get lateral post-snap. And he's going to get lateral very fast, getting right into Oluwatimi's space. What's really nice about this rep from Oluwatimi's standpoint is his willingness to go out and then meet Kenny Clark. Not wait for Kenny Clark to get into him, not to catch Kenny Clark, but to go out and sort of take the action to him. It's a very important part of this play because I think the Packers are running a sort of a weird ass delayed stunt here where it's a, not a pure stunt from the start, but a sort of a beat after the snap. That then you're going to have the right defensive end for the Packers try to swoop in around Kenny Clark. But I think because Oluwatimi got out here so quickly to Clark to meet him that it just sort of mucked up the whole timing of the play. It's really impressive if you think about this because look at where Oluwatimi is in snapping this. He's got no man over the top of him. He doesn't know technically if those linebackers aren't going to come on a blitz or if maybe that right defensive end for the Packers isn't going to be the one to looping into him. But he quickly diagnoses and figures out very fast that it's going to be Clark as the man coming into his position that he's got to go block and then goes out there to meet him. Love the aggressiveness, love the smarts, which is always on display with Olo Atimi. In every good offensive lineman, there's usually a little bit of nastiness, a little bit of meanness beneath the surface there, even if they're a real nice guy. And you want to see that. You want to see that willingness to punish defenders if the opportunity presents itself. On this rep, post-snap, another one in pass protection. First, you got Oluwatimi helping out Greg Island with a nice left arm, making sure that Island has his nose tackle in control here before then he transitions out over to Anthony Bradford and the man he's engaged with to put a nice little kidney shot there into the defensive tackle and send him off his feet onto his knees. So two nice things happening on this play. First, making sure Island's set, and then getting over there and dropping the defender to the ground with a nice little kidney shot. A couple plays later, Anthony Bradford returns the favor for Oluwatimi helping him out by helping him out, smashing a defender that Oluwatimi is engaged with to the ground, 
and then jumping on top of him. I mean, that's when you know you've got a real mean ass offensive lineman where not only do they knock the guy down, but then they're gonna do the uh, suplex from the top rope on him as well. And that's just what Anthony Bradford does on this play. I'll tell you, in this preseason, there was not another Seahawk offensive lineman who was as mean, as nasty, and maybe as powerful as Anthony Bradford was. He didn't hit every block. He had a good amount of whiffs on his tape throughout this preseason period. He is a project, he is a developmental guy. But when you watch him on plays with like this, where he bullies guys, where he overpowers guys and almost does so with ease, I know he's engaged with Oluwatimi, but he's got already that grown man strength as Anthony Bradford. I love too that you have the two different types of mentality at play here on this play. You've got Bradford, who's then gonna take care of that defensive lineman and then make him pay the price for having the audacity to even try to rush the passer against the Seahawks. And then you have Oluwatimi, which after his guy gets knocked to the ground, He's just looking for the next guy that he can help out in pass protection. Kind of a funny play. You've got a bang, bang play here. This is going to be DJ Dallas's best run of the game and the Seahawks' best run of the game. And it's going to go right behind Oluwatimi. This is not a much about Oluwatimi dominating his matchup here. He does a good enough job, gets off the line, gets his hands placed in the right position, gets set properly under balance and control. But this is really about Anthony Bradford and that tenacity, that meanness, and that power that I was talking about a couple of plays ago, again showing up here where he just molly whops the guy right out of the hole, clearing the lane here for DJ Dallas to get up the football field. We got a little bit of a poor rep here from Oluwatimi on this one. It's gonna be a read option run, again, going right behind him on this play. And he gets caught off guard as he gets a little bit too over the top of his skis, gets his head a little bit too far in front of his feet. And then he gets caught a little bit by the defensive lineman on a swim move. Now, Anthony Bradford is there to save the day, which is great to see as he comes through and again hits the guy with a nice little bit of authority here and kind of cleans things up a bit for Oluwatimi, but not the greatest of reps. A couple of plays ago, I told you the back out at Michigan, I called Oluwatimi the stunt eraser when I was initially scouting him. And it's because of plays that you're gonna see just like this, where he just so easily, so seamlessly hands off the stunter or picks up a new stunter coming into his zone and it's just no thing for him. It's not hard at all, it's second nature. And that's just what you see here. He's got a high degree of difficulty just to hit this initial first block because he's got to snap and then get out all the way to the three tech, which is pretty lateral at this point. Then he's got the three tech looping in the opposite direction from the way that he's going out there to meet him. And then quickly now he's got 99 handing off right into his zone. He picks up the handoff very easily, very quickly, very fluidly. So he goes right here from 96 to 99, 96 to 99. 96, 99. Such a seamless transition there, and this is a really big skill set that you look for with centers, their ability to do this type of thing. Because oftentimes, they're not set to pre-program to block a guy prior to the snap. They have to feel it in the moment. They have to feel it post-snap and read it correctly. And that's what Oluwatimi does throughout his film, going back to his film out there in Michigan. This is part of the reason he was the Remington Award winner. Second level blocking is gonna be a big part of what Oluwatimi is going to do here in Seattle. And that's what he's gonna be asked to do here on the linebacker. But you're not just always gonna be often asked to go and get to that second level block. First, you might have to get a little bit of business done at the line of scrimmage before you get to that second level. So here, Olu first gets a hand on the nose tackle. And, and nose tackle is actually twisting in the opposite direction. So he's not able or has to do very much to kind of slow him down here a bit. But what he's there to make sure of is that that nose tackle is not getting early penetration on this play before he can then get to his second level block. So there's sort of a one-two thing going on here for Oluwatimi on this play, not just as pure as him getting to the second level block. He gets the hand on the nose tackle, nose tackle twists back the opposite way, and then he gets down on the second level block to the linebacker. This running play doesn't go anywhere for the Seattle Seahawks, but it's not because of Oluwatimi. He blocks his side of it upright, and if they had hit the hole right with the right timing here, this play might have gone for a little bit more, but other guys kind of failed in their job on this particular play. Here's a real fun block from Oluwatimi that to me is just all about technique and feel. He's gonna have to go and get to this right defensive end, and he's gonna have to take that right defensive end over to here. Not an easy task. So I gotta first get out there and hit my reach block out to the edge. And then I have to take that reach block and move him in the complete opposite direction of the momentum of me going out there to just meet him. And indeed he's able to do that, but he's not doing it with just raw, pure force of power or athletic dynamicism. No, 
What he's doing is he's going out there and attacking a half a man first. What I mean by that is he's gonna to get to the right shoulder that he's going for of that right defensive end because he's trying to clear towards that side of things. He wants to edge it out because he knows the running back is going right along into that hole. And what he does here is he gets the defensive end to kind of buy into what he's trying to make him do because the defensive end goes, okay, you're attacking my outside shoulder. I'm gonna run a spin, a swim move then to my other shoulder. To, to where you're moving away from your leverage, to where I'm gonna be able to get around you. But he's kind of stepping right into Oluwatimi's trap here. Because Oluwatimi doesn't care if he gets around him on his right side. That's gonna take him out of the hole. That's gonna take him away from this run play. That's gonna be a success for Oluwatimi. And that's just what it is here on this play. So it's all about just the technique and feel for it. This is a high degree of difficulty block, but he shows you how smarts can sometimes get it done over raw, pure power and force. The Green Bay Packers post-snap here are going to run a little bit of a stunt to the left-hand side of the screen. This is going to leave Oluwatimi one-on-one with the outside linebacker, and he 100% completely stonewalls him. Many centers in this league get awfully nervous if you ask them to have to block a nose tackle one-on-one. -on -one. They'd much prefer to be laying a double-team block on another player, or if they've got to block a nose tackle, they themselves are getting some help. And while Oluwatimi eventually does get some help on this particular play, he is controlling this nose tackle for the first couple of seconds post snap. He is getting a little bit of push up the field rather than that nose tackle getting push against him. We've had some undersized centers that have come through here in recent years that have gotten bent over backwards at times in real brutal ways on brutal plays because they could not hold up one-on-one -on -one against nose tackles. There's a play against Joey Hunt with DJ Jones in San Francisco a couple of years ago that was just brutal. You also got Joey Hunt again to Fletcher Cox who just about turned him into a folding chair on the football field. And last year, Austin Blythe, another undersized center, oftentimes had some issues in this very same department. Well, as we can see here, Oluwatimi has the strength and power and the technical goods and know-how to get these kind of blocks handled and done. So you say that wasn't good enough, Brandon. He technically wasn't handling that nose tackle all on his own. He got some help from Island there only a couple seconds after the play. Well, fair enough. How about this rep? where he handles the nose tackle one-on-one -on -one in pass pro, giving up very little ground, giving Drew Locke or helping to give Drew Locke a very clean pocket. Locke's just not able to do much with it, but he completely controls this nose tackle from the onset of this play to the end of this play. Great rep. This guy can absolutely handle nose tackles one-on-one, -on -one, especially in pass protection. We got a touchdown run here late in the game against the Packers from the one yard line. And this is a play that's really set up by the mismanagement of the Packers alignment. If you look to the left-hand side of the screen here, you've got five Packer defenders over to that side of the line, and then you only have three Packer defenders on the other side of the line, right where the running play is going to go. But this play could be messed up if your guys at the point of attack don't handle their blocks. It could still go to hell. And Oluwatimi is one of those guys at the point of attack here. He's got to take on the nose tackle and what you see in this play is him showing off again the technical expertise that he brings to the position. This is not a center that's drive blocking this nose tackle back into the end zone and it's very easy to see him do his block and how awesome he is at it. Instead, he's doing it with technique. And what I mean by that is he's going to go and take that outside shoulder of that Packer player and attack that. He's going to shield block this one. And that is that he's going to get his body positioned here so that that for that defender to get to the ball carrier, he's got to go through Oluwatimi. It's not about push here, it's about the technique. And in keeping that technique in that manner and walling that defender off for just that amount of time, because he doesn't do it for a very long period of time, it's a one yard run, just long enough to let the back scoop past him. If you look at the back, if you look at the, the block here just to the side of Oluwatimi by the left guard, he's not able to do kind of the same thing. He does just enough to allow his block to allow this play to score. He gets just enough done, but he tries to kind of block up 64 straight up, hit him right dead center in the chest as though he's going to try to kind of drive block him back. He doesn't have that same kind of technique that Oluwatimi does to get to that inside shoulder, create that natural leverage for the running back to have a quick, clear pathway to get to the end zone and for the defender to not have a pathway to take the ball carrier down. Another simply sensational rep from Oluwatimi here in pass protection, where again, he's going to be matched up with a nose tackle one-on-one, -on -one, and again, he's going to show off some of that technical brilliance. What you're going to see from him here is what's called a push-pull move, and that is that you have a defensive lineman you've set up for a few plays where you're really hammering him with your punch. You're really leading him to believe that this guy's just trying to kind of physically overwhelm me. I better match that. 
I better bring the same kind of physicality for my end of things. And right as you get that defensive lineman amped up to the nines to try to meet you with that physicality, you then essentially do what they call pull the chair out from under him. You're doing the pull part of the move. So it goes from push to pull and the man ends up flat on his face looking very, very silly. You see this in basketball at times where you'll have a post defender with an offensive player banging down in there on the blocks. He doesn't yet have the ball. He's trying to get good position so that when the ball is fed down there into him, he's got a much easier shot closer to where the basket is actually at. But then what you see the defender do is they're battling and jostling down there as the defender will sometimes simply just take a couple of steps backwards. The offensive player is expecting him to be there, expecting there to be some force pushing back against him, and he just falls on down to the floor. It's a beautiful move. It's a move you don't see a lot of centers across the league able to pull off. You have to be technically very good in your bag, but Olatimi has it already, even as young as he is. How about a pancake? Everybody likes pancakes, and that's just what Olatimi is going to give you here. He's matched up once again, one-on-one -on -one with the nose tackle, mano a mano. Most centers in this league can't handle nose tackles one-on-one, -on -one, but Olatimi, as he has shown you on this tape, indeed can. He takes this nose tackle and he puts him on his ass, but right quick on this play. It's a play that doesn't go for a touchdown or a score because the rest of the blockers don't handle their job, but he does his, and not only does his job, but he dominates in doing so. I am very encouraged by Oluwatimi's first performance here in the preseason, and it looks every bit like the player I was seeing out of Michigan and what he's bringing to the table. This is a very pure fit for what you want on this offense. I know he didn't test particularly well, but this is one of those times where you got to go outside the testing numbers and watch how the guy gets it done on the football field. Michigan asked their center to do a lot of reach blocks, getting to the second level, pulling out in front, a lot of movement-based stuff. And if he couldn't do that stuff or he had holes in that part of his game, like the testing numbers might think make you think, then that stuff would have shown up. He would have been exposed in that manner, and he wasn't. In fact, he looked very comfortable, like he looked in this Packer game, when you ask him to do movement-based stuff. And this offense and this scheme is a movement-based offense with its offensive linemen. You want mobility, guys that can work in space and are comfortable in space, that can get to a second-level block and not just arrive there, but arrive there to actually then land the block. And that's something that he is definitely going to pull off. I'm really encouraged off of what I saw from the Packer tape in this preseason. And I also believe that this is a guy that is going to sooner than later ascend to the starting role here with the Seahawks team, maybe overtaking it, maybe overtaking Evan Brown this year. But a part of this also is that both of those guys seem to be playing pretty good football. So Evan Brown might not be ready quite yet to relinquish those starting duties. Still, I think Ola team has got a good upside here to him. I don't think he's going to be a star or some guy that's going to be one of the best centers in the league, but a solid, solid starter in this league and never at any one given point the weak link on your offensive line. They say the, the way to construct a great offensive line is to not have any weak link. It's not necessarily about having the star power, Walter Jones and Hutchinson on one side. No, it's actually about making sure you don't have the weak link that an opposition can then go and attack and just basically tear your whole offensive down almost from the inside out at that point. And with this guy there, that is not going to happen. Very encouraged by what I saw from this kid. He is the real deal and this is going to be kind of a pro's pro. He is kind of your ideal for what you look at in the center position and a guy that's very heady, can think on his feet, can process out there. I have no doubt he's going to handle all of the line calls and all of that as we go into the future as well. He's completely got that in his game. He's played a lot of college football before he became a pro. This kid's ready to go. He's ready to roll. Might take him a year to get there, but once he does get there, you will absolutely be happy with this kid at the center position and he will probably round out to being probably the best center that we've had here since going back to Max Unger, my bold prediction. I appreciate you watching. My name is Brandon Kane. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. But beyond all that, don't you ever forget, go Hawks.